Hello everyone, today I am going to discuss Sam Harris and his misunderstanding of mathematics. Now, I refer to this specific instance all the time, because it is just a perfect crystallization of a prominent false view of math. So I figured I would once and for all deal with it in its own video. Except, this won't be once and for all, because I will surely refer to this again, but I still wanted to do a video on it. This one will probably be shorter than my other doesn't understand videos. I just want to get it out of the way and have it on the record. So, let's begin. So you say Mormons are slightly more absurd than Christians. Right? Because you say you take all the absurdity of Christianity and then you add on top of it further absurdity that Jesus is going to come to Missouri, etc. Right. I think those are really good points, but to me, that's the difference between 2 plus 2 equals 5 or 2 plus 2 equals 6. It's, well, neither one is true, so what difference does it make? Well, no, th this is actually, this is a cute statement and I think nothing hinges on it, but it's actually a mathematically precise statement. If you think Jesus is going to come back, that's one order of improbability. If you think Jesus is going to come back, to Jackson County, Missouri, that actually increases the unlikelihood or, or decreases no, the likelihood. This, I mean, if we're talking about math, math. it's like dividing by zero. No, no, he, this, it's, this it's is not, equally this, unlikely that he's going to go to Jerusalem no. or Missouri. He ain't coming. No, 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 <laughs> the whole thing's no. A, like, it, is no, no, more you, likely to come to Missouri no, or no, to no, Athens? If, no, if you no, no, if the, it's the specifics that make it less probable. If you just think he's going to come back somewhere, uh -huh. that's one thing. If you think he's going to come back to Jackson County, Missouri, that's less likely. And that, that, is a, that is a mathematically true point. This is just probability theory. Even if I were to Nothing. grant you that, which I definitely do not grant you, but even well, if I were to grant you that. You're going to hear from a bunch of mathematicians who okay. are going to uh, insist hey. that you grant that. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And I look forward to that, okay. and hopefully we'll get 75 pages on that. All right. So as much as I detest the truly abominable Cenk Uger, he is actually correct here, and Sam is disastrously wrong. Mathematics is about the world. It applies to reality. You cannot simply take a construct, an abstract construct, and say, well, it's just math. It's just pure math. It's just pure probability. There is no such thing as pure math. Not in reality just as there's no such thing as pure length. Now we have a concept of length, and that's valid, but length always exists in reality in some specific form. There is no such thing as detached probability applying to nothing in particular. Now let me use a better example than Jenks. Jenk used the Zeus <laughs> idea, but let's say square circle. Are you more likely to find a square circle if you look just in California, or if you look in the entire United States, well, Sam would say, well, it's just pure probability. You're more likely to find it if you look in the entire United States. It's just the specificity of California narrows the range. No, but there is no such thing as a square circle. That is an impossibility, and so the chance is zero in either case. Now, observe what he is doing here with Jesus. What we can't, cannot take for granted is the impossibility of miracles. We can't say that Jesus is impossible, that God is impossible, that turning water into wine is impossible, which you have to accept if you're going to say Jesus is going to come back. We can't rule out any of these things. We can't rule out any contradictions of the law of identity itself. We can't do that. That's out of bounds. We have to be skeptics. We can't know for sure. But what we can take for granted is the laws of mathematics, which are apparently this a priori thing floating around that we just know. We just know. We can't rule out miracles, but we do just know the laws of mathematics. We can rule out the idea that mathematics doesn't apply in this case. Oh no, mathematics applies to everything. Well, this is because Sam Harris thinks of mathematics in this platonic, detached way. It's just this thing separate from existence. For him, it's an intuition, which is related to another doesn't understand video I'm going to do on Sam. Sam Harris doesn't understand reason. I think you will be shocked 
at how much of an enemy of reason Sam Harris actually explicitly is. But that'll be in another video. Math is about the world. You derive it from the world, and you apply it to the world. There is no such thing as more or less likely, as, as likelihood, in the case of impossible things. What's most important here is just to understand the nature of math and logic in general. Sam's view is that anything you can put into probabilistic or syllogistic, presumably, terms has a chance of being real or should be given some respect. No, you can put total nonsense into any formalized system. There's form, there's matter. There's the concepts in a syllogism, and then there are the propositions and the relationship of those propositions. You can't just treat the form or the construction as primary and then, well, we can put anything in there and the form legitimizes the content. No. If the content doesn't make any sense, you throw it out. You don't say, well, math is math, so therefore, you know, it's more likely we're going to find a square circle in California. No, it's not more likely. The chance is zero in both cases. And this is a conclusion you can never reach if you're thinking about mathematics as this detached thing. No, math applies to the world, and if you don't understand that, you're going to go down very bad paths, and you're going to come to very bad conclusions. So anyway, that's it for this. I just wanted to have a separate video for this, because it's, it's just so perfectly wrong, and Sam just doesn't know what he's talking about. And you know what's funny? <laughs> he says you're going to get pages from mathematicians. Uh, the thing is, mathematicians don't know what they're talking about. Most mathematicians, including one Sam has had on his podcast, have no idea of what the philosophical foundations of math are. They think it's platonic, their numbers are these real things out there. So, yeah, guess what? You can get a lot of mathematicians. <laughs> writing stuff in, but being a mathematician is not the same as being a philosopher. Being a physicist is not the same as being a philosopher. Jordan Peterson made the same mistake in my other video. I'm not qualified to talk about the relationship between consciousness and existence because I'm not a physicist. Well, that's not a physicist's job. A physicist's job is not to identify the relationship between consciousness and existence, and a mathematician's job is not to identify well, essentially the same thing. He should know it. He's not really qualified to do math if he, if he doesn't understand the basis of math, although you can still do it because, as I say, it's a basically a deductive thing after you get going. So it's easy to reach a lot of conclusions while still having your head in the clouds and not knowing what the hell you're talking about, which is what most mathematicians do. Now, I don't say this to imply that you should have this smug attitude sitting up here, oh, I get to tear down all the views of the particular sciences, the special sciences, from this position of superiority where I didn't have to do any work and I can just tear it down. I think that's what attracts a lot of people to philosophy, and particularly objectivism. It's a bad motivation. Don't think in those terms. Now, you can rule things out on the basis of just knowing philosophy. That's the whole point of philosophy. As the late Alan Gotthelf, the late objectivist philosopher Alan Gotthelf once said, you reason with axioms, not from them. The same thing is true of philosophy. Philosophy is like the guardrails when you're bowling. It's just there to keep you on the track, to make sure you don't go out of bounds. You can't derive the nature of physics or any special science from philosophy, but it keeps you on track. It lets you know if you've gone way off track into something that's definitely wrong. That's what philosophy does. It doesn't give you all the details. It just gives you the broad rules, and that's extremely valuable. You need to know those broad rules. But... If you find yourself getting a nihilistic thrill from the fact that you can just sit up here and tear everybody else's hard work down <laughs> without having to do any of the work yourself, you know, that's how social justice people act. That's how people in academia act. They love this. They love this unearned position of power. And I think people see Ayn Rand acting so confidently 
And they say, yeah, I want that power. I want to be able to tell all these hardworking people that they're just wrong and I don't have to do any of the work to know it. I just, I just know it. That's a bad way of coming at things. That is not how you should treat this or think about it. I'm not accusing anyone specifically, I just know that this is common because I've seen it a lot. It's obvious that a lot of people are attracted to objectivism for nihilistic reasons. They like to use Ayn Rand's certainty as a club to beat people over the head with, and they just get a thrill out of being able to use unearned power. It's really power lust. It's, it's, I didn't have to work for this, I just have it, and I get to destroy people who did do hard work in their field. Do not treat philosophy that way. That is not what it is. And most of those people become, they were never objectivists really, but they leave objectivism and they go become idiots like the amazing atheist. You know, he claims to have been an objectivist. <laughs> now, either he is simply intellectually promiscuous and was never a real objectivist, or the only path I can see from being a true objectivist to where TJ, the amazing atheist, is now, is several or several hundred concussions. And there is some evidence of that if you watch him. <laughs> but anyway, don't, don't be like that. Philosophy is a positive value. It is here to keep you on the rails. It is here to keep you within the bounds of reality so that you can figure things out. And... If you start to detach yourself from reality and you go floating off into nowhere like Sam Harris, you are going to come to some very bad conclusions. And, well, a lot of what Sam says is, uh, <laughs> is proof of that. So I'll do another video on Sam soon. I'm not sure if I'm going to do him or Thaddeus Russell next, but, or maybe Matt Walsh or Mike Rowe or Dennis Prager, one of these people. Um, anyway, I will, uh, See you in the next video.